Zero FXP. Welcome back to my dog walk with Mazzy. See here, nice walk here in the country of the United Kingdom. So, which one do you prefer? DMR, D-Star or Fusion? This is a, a question that comes up quite often and I like all three modes. There is a learning curve to all three and I will say that in my opinion C4FM Yesu is probably the easiest one because you just add your the frequency, the mode, digital narrow, add your call sign and away you go. Then you've got D star which is on icon radios. A little bit more complicated because you add your call sign, repeater one, repeater two, which is the confusing bit. The first one is you and how you're gonna connect, then what you're gonna connect to, okay? So mm, I, I always get confused, but once you fill the blanks, and this is why they brought out DR mode because DR mode packages the repeaters for you and all the settings you're gonna need, frequency. You do always have to select a shift, even if it's a hotspot, a zero shift, otherwise it won't work because it was designed for use with a repeater. So when they, when they, when people started making hotspots, MMDVM hotspots, you still needed that shift for it to work. And that's why you set a minus or a plus shift. So it just goes through the system. Price wise, you'll find that the Yesu and the D-Star equipment is not cheap. I can't think of a, of a budget radio unless you go for an older radio, like an Icon 51, you'll get one of them now for under, under 200 pound. Well worth it, by the way, the DR mode, which is a learning curve in itself. Um, is in the 51 and and, and the you know radios that are being sold now like the icon 50 and the 52 which is a good 550 pounds in the UK lovely radios and the, you know what's the point of a digital radio well it, it can not only transmit your voice but it can also transmit data and location so you can send messages you can let people know where you are and they can let you know where they are same goes for DMR the nice thing about a DMR radio is that you can buy them really cheap. The popular one that everyone gets is the Anytone 878, but I would say the Bofung DM1701 VHF UHF digital radio with satellite tracking when using the Open GD77 software is easily your best value, about £43 delivered. And, and, and check out my videos on that. But if someone said, which one do you recommend? I'm going to have to say the 878. If you go to Bridgecom's site, DMR, 878, 578, there's a lot of backup, a lot of code plugs. Code plugs is basically software that you send to the radio with all your channels. And with DMR, you have talk groups. You have slot one and two. If you've not heard of slot one and two, it's effectively cutting the channel in half and making, making it like two channels. And you'll find with D-Star and C4FM, they're using the whole channel. But yes, you can send photographs with D-Star and C4FM, no problem at all in messages. I don't think I've ever seen software that sends photographs on DMR, actually. Just start thinking about it. But you'll find that all of these radio, all of these digital radios, they do always work with VHF and UHF. And they nearly always have the ability to to send, to send location when, when they're in digital mode. You can buy a non-GPS radio for DMR, and if you use the Brandmeister soft system, you can still send your location even if you have not got a GPS um, you know, item hardware inside the radio. So yeah, let me know which one you prefer, which system you prefer. Do you think the cost of digital radio is worth it? What's your opinion regarding what they call real radio and not real radio? You know, does it does it affect your hobby? Do you mind if it's digital, if it's going via the internet? Do you prefer it to be, you know, what they call real radio, where it's a proper radio signal going from your radio to another radio? Is a repeater in the middle, which is basically a giant antenna on a hill, repeating your signal? Is that real radio? Or, and you know, with HF radio, you know you're bouncing your, your big giant wave off of the ionosphere, which, you know, having a contact on HF is very satisfying, even if it's a contest contact, it gives you that feeling like your antenna's doing its thing. You don't need much of an antenna to get a HF contact, to be honest. If you cut a length of wire to the right length or half wave length of the, of the band frequency that you're on, you're gonna get contacts, even on a little Ye Yesu 817, you don't need much power. When the, when the conditions are right, 
you will get you'll get through I mean you do, you do need to make sure that you haven't got lots of electrical items turned on near your HF radio because the it's going to wipe it's literally going to wipe out the signal all you're going to do is get nine pounds of of static and there isn't nine pounds of static um, in in the in the sky let's say it it will be coming from your house yeah take it from it or, or your or your neighbor's house yeah it won't come just naturally from thin air unless there's been some sort of freak solar storm um, so so yeah um, the nice thing about the digital modes they do work normally on 70 centimeters that's 430 type frequency megahertz um, so you can just buy a digital radio you can get yourself a hotspot if you want which effectively links your radio transmission in your room in your shack to the internet uh, and, and then then you can join all the different rooms so c4 fm yesu has rooms d star has what they call reflectors and they are called ref reflectors xlx dcs and xrf but most people tend to use the the ref 30 charlie and reflector one charlie you'll learn all this and uh, you'll find it's the similar people that are that are enjoying this part of the hobby so let me know what you think which is your preferred mode and which radio do you recommend thanks for watching my youtube channel bye for now